Hey, what's up? Pizza Loving Nerd here. This is the Jingpad A1. And yes, I'm going to be reviewing the hardware. Now, I'm not going to go into full detail of everything because I have another video coming up on this where I daily drived this for my school and I just want to give out my experience with that. However, this is going to be my first impressions video just playing with the hardware and everything. So, let's get into it. Just a disclaimer, just to be 100% upfront with everyone, I was sent this tablet to review, so keep that in mind. They didn't tell me to say anything good about the tablet or anything, but you know, there's always that bias from getting sent something. Anyways, in the box is the tablet itself, the case for the tablet, a sim ejector tool and a USB-C cable and brick, and they also shipped me the keyboard case, and the keyboard was in a separate box. In terms of build quality, this thing feels very good in the hand, it's made of metal and everything, it feels just as good as an iPad would. Now I do have some complaints, for example one, the back is a fingerprint magnet, and it looks a little bit too much like an iPad, where I had like multiple people ask me if I'm hacking an iPad, but other than those two things, the build quality is just amazing. I don't want to bend it too hard, but there isn't any flex when I do this, so this should be able to pass Jerry rig everything's Ben test, unlike another tablet that is made by a big company that is a fruit, you know. It also comes with this case. Now, uh, this case, it's nice to have, but it won't really protect the device that much. And the reason is, it doesn't go like around the tablet, it just sticks in with magnets. And this is both a good and bad thing, because one, if I want to remove the tablet, it, it removes just like that if I want to, say, put it in a keyboard case. It's very easy to remove the tablet from the case, and it does stay on pretty tight. Like, it's not going to fall out like this. However, I feel like if I just dropped it, it could come out of the case, and that could cause the screen to break. Other than that, the build quality in the case is good. It's got a little magnetic spot for the pencil it comes with. And I can do this and move the device, slide it around on the case, and there's little indents right there, which is good if you want to watch a video or draw using the case. It's, you know, it's got that classic iPad case kickstand. Now let's talk about the keyboard it comes with. One of the nice things about the keyboard is how easy it is to add and remove the tablet, just in case I want to take it out to draw on it or something like that. Just like the case, it will stick in like this with magnets. And then if I want to take it out, there's a little corner I could pull it from right here. So very nice for when you want to add and remove the tablet into the case. It makes it very convenient. Now the build quality on it is good. It's made of metal, the keyboard and trackpad feel good to hold. And again, the tablet is easy to take in and out, but it also won't fall out if I jiggle it. However, the hinge on this thing does feel kind of cheap. One, it can't go backwards like a bunch of those Windows tablet laptop hybrids can do, where it looks like a laptop and then you flip it backwards to have just a screen on the back. I kind of wish that this keyboard case could do that because then I could use the keyboard as a kickstand. However, the other issue is it just makes some crunch sounds sometimes when I move it around. Can't really get it to pick up on my mic, but it those crunch sounds are there and you can hear it and it sounds like something's gonna break i feel like other than the hinge though i like everything else about the keyboard the keys feel really good to type on the touchpad feels good and i feel like the touchpad's a little bit limited by software but i'll get to that in another video and overall i would recommend the keyboard case except for the fact that it's 200 dollars which kind of seems overpriced to me it is good though the next accessory i'd like to talk about is the pencil I have nothing to complain about this pencil. It feels good in the hand to use, just like a regular pencil. The battery life is good enough where I haven't had to charge it once. It's pressure sensitive with 4096 points, and the latency is good. I cannot think of a single thing to complain about with this pencil, so good job. Now let's talk more about the device itself and not the accessories. In terms of specs, it has a Unisoc Tiger T7510, which should perform similarly to a OnePlus 6 according to Tux phones. And it's also got 8 gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of storage, which is also expandable through a micro SD card slot, and a 8000 mAh battery. It also has a 16 megapixel main rear camera and an 8 megapixel front camera. However, the photos it takes are just mediocre, but I think that those camera problems are software related. I think if they just added some post-processing, something like that, these cameras could be great. 
Now, the last hardware thing I'd like to talk about is the display. The display is great. It's got deep blacks thanks to it being an OLED with the ability to disable the backlight for black pixels. The color accuracy is good, the viewing angles are good, and it's got a pretty high DPI, although I don't know the exact resolution because I never put that in my bullet points for this video. So the display, pretty good. Now lastly, let's talk about the software because that seems to be the only thing that this product needs work on. The hardware on it is phenomenal. Jing OS is really cool, but it still needs some work. For example, it's missing features such as having a vertical mode for the tablet instead of just a horizontal mode, and it doesn't have features like a search bar for searching for apps. On top of that, its app store barely has any apps on it, which is kind of a bummer. And you can't just sudo apt install apps, because if you do, which should technically work, you're almost always going to have scaling issues where it just doesn't properly fit on this high DPI screen. On top of that, Jing OS is still on kernel 4.14, which is getting very old, so uh, try and update that. I understand if your SoC isn't fully mainline yet and you're still stuck on an older kernel, but it'd be nice to be on at least something 5.x, whatever. 4.14 is pretty old. Now, this is a brand new device, and the software is certainly more polished than something like a Pinephone Braveheart when I got that. And so I think it's only a matter of months until the software is fully usable and can replace something like an iPad, especially with Android app support upcoming, which will fix the app problem. Really, they just need to fix scaling issues with GDK apps and add a couple minor features like, again, vertical mode for the OS and a search. But once they do that, this tablet is going to be great. In fact, I'm already using it to replace my school laptop, so stay tuned for that video. Anyways, that's the video. Thank you for watching, and thanks to my patrons, Mitchell Fantino, Sam Covet, Tech Hut, Frank, John Sass, and Jim Peter. The support really helps, and I appreciate it. And that's all.